The Bird Rock Lighthouse in the southern Bahamas guides our approach to the crooked Ackland's Atoll, where on this leg of our voyage we investigate the creeks of French Wells, meet some of the unique marine life found in the salt flats in this area, then sail to Long Key. En route to Dollar Harbour we encounter whales, explore salt creeks by dinghy, and finally cross the Great Bahama Bank to Georgetown, where we make friends with the southern rays of Elizabeth Harbour, all on distant shores. I wanted to see the world. I longed for the romance of travel. Now we live on a sailboat. And travel the oceans. Join us as we sail to distant shores. The Bahamas stretch for almost 500 miles from Florida past Cuba to almost Haiti in the Dominican Republic. This time we're exploring some of the most remote of these islands as we visit French Wells and Long Key in the Crooked Acklands Atoll, then across the channel to Long Island. Here we go on to the Great Bahama Bank at Dollar Harbor and then on to Georgetown, the largest settlement in the southern Bahamas. In 1783 American loyalists settled here, bringing with them slaves and started a short-lived cotton industry. At the turn of the 19th century, there were around 50 operational plantations in the Crooked Acklands district. But the blight in the 1820s destroyed the economy, and plantation owners left to build their fortunes elsewhere. Today, most of the natives support themselves through simple fishing and farming. We're making landfall at Crooked Island at French Wells, so named for the well found here at the point. French Wells is also one of the main entrances to the Bight of Acklands, an area of shallow water in the center of the Crooked Acklands Atoll that extends for a thousand square miles and is rich with marine life. The surrounding mangroves are home to numerous birds, and one of the activities we're looking forward to here is exploring the mangrove creeks by dinghy. The nearest settlement is a half-hour dinghy ride away through this dredged cut, but the harbor here offers good protection for visiting yachts since the surrounding sandbars break any building seas. Although we're intentionally beaching our shallow draft sailboat here on the bar, there's 10-foot depth in the anchorage, making it a good harbor for most visiting cruisers. Today's project, take a look at the bow thruster tunnel. This is what we use to move the bow of the boat back and forth. The propeller pushes the boat, but it's got grown up with barnacles. I'm going to take a look and see if we can get the barnacles out of the tunnel. So the plan here is I'm going to try and get off the little barnacles and stuff that have gone in here. And they got all over the propeller as well as uh, inside the internal side of the tunnel. That's just about got it done, just tidy up. So if you do happen to use your wife's only wooden spatula for work on the bottom of the boat, remember afterwards, clean it up before you put it back in the galley. The current runs quickly through this cut, but shortly after low tide, there is slack water. This will be my best chance to take a look at the undersea life here. one of the most unusual animals I have ever seen. Called a sea hare, since he has what optimistically looks like two ears. They're actually closer to a nose, since the purpose of these two organs is smell. The sea hare looks like a slug, but is actually related to our friend the conch, another gastropod, but instead of the big shell, the sea hare has only a tiny remnant of a shell on his back. Isn't nature amazing? A nearby crab with his eyes just out of the sand scuttles off when I approach. Now we want to explore the surrounding mangroves, which are also full of life. The boat is securely beached and anchored, so we head off in the dinghy for an afternoon outing through the mangrove creeks. 
Mangroves are found only in tropical and subtropical regions such as the Bahamas. They are forests or communities of trees and shrubs that grow in saltwater areas and are known as island builders. Mangroves are responsible for expanding the islands in the Bahamas, starting by sending their penetrating roots out into the sea. The maze of prop roots on these red mangrove plants slows down the currents, causing tiny suspended particles to sink to the bottom, turning the sand to mud. This is cool. This is a black mangrove, and the mangroves live always in the low areas, and they need water, of course, but that's salt water. So, you're drinking salt water, you don't want too much salt, and what they do is they secrete the salt out through their leaves. So, they're all sort of covered in stuff. Yep, nice sea salt. And all the leaves are covered with it here. From French Wells, we sail down island to Long Key. With the strong swell running from the northwest today, the anchorage off Albert Town is untenable, as is the town key, now completely awash in the breaking waves. So we go to the protected anchorage near the small ferry dock on the other side of this little island. From here, it's only a 15-minute hike down a dirt road to the town. It's an interesting walk through abandoned salt pans, where, if you're lucky, you may catch a fleeting glimpse of flocks of flamingos off in the distance. The settlement of Albert Town fell on hard times with the failing of the sponge and salt industries. A sign of better times is the old Anglican church, the largest built in the Bahamas south of Nassau. From the Crooked Island archipelago, we head west to Long Island and on to the Great Bahama Bank at Dollar Harbor. Here, the shallow water stretches for hundreds of miles, almost to Florida. We just arrived at the end of Long Island, and we're seeing a sperm whale. Sperm whales are the largest living toothed animal. Wow, fantastic! Adult males can grow to 67 feet, or about 20 meters in length. A sperm whale never expected that here. This sperm whale is about the size of our boat and isn't staying around to visit. Seems there's lots of interesting things to see in this remote body of water in the Bahamas, including this old-style wooden sailboat en route to Nassau from Haiti. Engineless cargo-carrying fishing sloops like this one are still used there and are often seen in the Bahamas. By lunchtime, we notice a dramatic change in the color of the water as we sail on to the shallow water of the Great Bahama Bank. Swimming pool blue replaces the dark sapphire blue we were seeing earlier in the day when we were sailing in deep water. Now we have to keep an eye on the depth, which at the moment is about 15 feet or 5 meters. But as we approach Dollar Harbor, there are coral heads to avoid. Fortunately, the water in the Bahamas is so clear they're easy to spot as distinct dark patches against the sand bottom. Still, it's a good idea to have someone stationed up at the bow with eyes peeled to keep a good lookout. Isn't this water amazing? We're stopping at Dollar Key tonight. There's big distances between the islands. It's quite an isolated spot, so it should be pretty interesting. In this area that's drying out, you can see little starting to form, just from single stalks and then multiplying. Just uh, learning a little bit about the boat, playing with the shallow capabilities by lifting the keel up. One of the tricks, it's like having a four-wheel drive. You can get your car stuck in places no one could ever come and get you out of. So the idea here is we can be a bit more self-sufficient by leaving the keel a little bit down. So that way if we do hit the sand, we just hit with the keel, which we can raise and back off again like having a safety valve. So I've just left it down here. Now this looks like a pretty shallow spot. Got a bar up ahead. I thought we could go up into this forward area, but I don't think uh, even the lift keel will get us over this. Nice thing about this kind of sailing is you can navigate. You don't need any buoys or anything floating in the water. 
you can just look at the color and determine since that part looks like it's over two and a half, three meters deep, we can go there, but this looks like it's only about uh, you know, one and a bit meters or one meter deep. So instead of trying to get over that, we'll go around the corner. Pretty cool place. Nobody else around. In fact, we haven't seen any boats for a couple days except that uh, fishing sloop. Amazing, like a thing out of the past. So this harbor is absolutely beautiful. We'll take the dinghy and see if we can explore some of these creeks around here. You can really get out and explore in a deserted world. Who would have thought it? No Wi-Fi, no internet, no nothing. Currents running through here are something else. I think that's what's really causing the formation of all these islands. The tide comes in about so much, at less than a meter, bringing this warm water up onto the banks, and then that precipitates out the calcium carbonate, which is the sand. And we've got lots of it here. This whole area is alive. We've got nurse sharks swimming, we've got Mangroves growing, pink flamingos wandering, all kinds of bird life. It's crabs and everybody. Who knows what's in all this stuff here? It is really a gorgeous spot. And there's just miles of it to explore. From Dollar Harbor, we enter onto the Great Bahama Bank as we head to Georgetown. Shallow water for the next 25 miles. Oh, it's a lot of fun learning to sail around in these things. Incredible shallow waters. You couldn't ask for a more fun thing to do on a gorgeous sunny day. On the Great Bahama Bank, you can sail for miles in depths ranging no more than 9 to 20 feet or about 3 to 6 meters. Occasionally, you have to dodge areas of reef or isolated coral heads, as well as shoal patches. But keeping a careful watch is pure pleasure as you cross this incredibly blue water. Well, I'm going to take a look. We've got into really shallow water here. It's only a few feet deep. I'm just going to go and take a look at the keel because I'm trying to figure out how the depth sounder is set to make sure that we know when the depth sounder says one meter or whatever if we're about to run aground. So, what it? Nice, look at that. Yeah, I can stand on the bottom. Yeah, we're floating with about that much underneath the keel. But the keel's down a little bit. So that means that we just have to remember with three dots off the keel on the display, that means that we're gonna be okay in 1.2 meters of water. With the keel down, the boat needs nine feet of water to float. That's 2.7 meters. So in the shallow water, we bring the keel most of the way up leaving just a bit down as insurance. In case we run aground, we would be able to lift it and pull off. So, uh, this water just continues forever like this. Up here, it's something like 80 miles in this kind of water to Nassau. Uh, back here, we've just come 15 or so miles from Long Island. And it's like a great huge friggin' swimming. As we complete our passage across this corner of the Great Bahama Bank, our next navigational challenge is Hog Key Cut. This narrow cut on our route to Georgetown separates the island of Little Exuma from Hog Key, but at low water has barely three feet or less than a meter of depth and a hard rocky bottom. For safety, we've timed our arrival just before high water slack tide, so we have improved depth and minimal current. Although Distant Shores is a shallow draft sailboat, we don't want to risk being pushed onto dangerous rocky ground by the strong current that can rush through here when the tide is racing. 
It's a bit of a zigzag coming through the cut, but with the sun behind us and the clear Bahamian water, we can see the deep water route quite clearly. Safely through, it's just a few more hours to our destination, Georgetown on Great Exuma. After being in the small settlements of the quiet Bahamian out islands, Georgetown feels like a metropolis, but it's a bustling community of just over a thousand people. It's the commercial center of the Exuma Island group, with numerous shops and services helpful to visiting sailors, so a good place to stop for a while. Across the harbor is Stocking Island and the Chat and Chill Beach Bar. We go ashore to chat and find the bar patrons making new friends in the shallows. Yeah, you can almost see them smiling. <laughs> what are we looking for today? Jeremy tells me the stingray first came to the beach when fishermen were cleaning conch for the restaurant. Now one will show up whenever he sees someone come near the water. You think you can smell it just if you hold it out in your hand? <laughs> Look at him, he's in like four inches of water. Neat. Hey, buddy. He'll, he's the one that came up and nudged, nudged my foot. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Big old stingray comes and sniffs your toes. <laughs> the stingray's main defense mechanism is his sharp, venomous tail. Although a number of people are injured by them every year, it is thought they only attack if threatened. I don't know. You're, 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 you're the pro. I mean, I'm, I'm hungry down. enough to eat that. <laughs> Hey, don't you eat it. Forget it's skin, it. It's skin. we got to feed him. Has it been marinated? No. Most attacks occur when people step on them, as they often sit quietly on the bottom. That's got to feel cool. It's amazing. They're, they're like, uh, it's like velvet. Yeah. It's, it's oh, man, he's soft. <laughs> yeah, they are, aren't they? Hey, sport. <laughs> oh, that's so <laughs> neat. Hey there, buddy, that's my foot. This isn't the same ray. He's got a pretty good tail. He's way. got a good tail, yeah. Back that's a fish. pretty big thrill to stand in the water and have a ray come up and go furry all over your feet. It feels like a softest velvet. The southern stingray can weigh as much as 300 pounds and measure five feet across the wings. This one is looking for something to eat. The stingray's mouth is underneath their body, and they catch food by digging for it. In this case, the ray is looking for a garden eel, a snake-like animal that burrows in the bottom. Here is a group of garden eels in a patch of sand and grass. They're about the size of a long pencil. The stingray is using his wings to dig down, in less than three minutes, he has dug almost a foot deep. A couple of trunkfish are hoping to find a leftover morsel when the ray has left. A trunkfish feeds by blowing a jet of water out of its mouth to expose small animals. Here he has found the equivalent of a huge excavator. The ray will move more sand than a trunkfish could ever hope to. In this case, when the ray leaves, the two find a wriggling leftover to fight over. This bay seems to have many trunkfish around, and I follow a couple over to a solitary sponge. At first it appears that they are just hanging about near the sponge, but a closer look reveals tiny cleaner shrimp have set up a cleaning station. This is a very important service for many fish, and one of the greatest examples of symbiosis. The shrimp climb on the fish and look for parasites to remove. The fish gets a good cleaning, and the shrimp gets a free dinner. I try mimicking this posture. It feels like he is tugging gently on the hairs of my finger. Thanks for watching this video from Distant Shore's 2009 voyage to the Bahamas. We hope you got some hints if you're planning your own trip to these wonderful islands. If you like this episode, please give it a thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Are you interested in the cruising lifestyle? Are you planning to sail away on a cruising adventure? Or researching cruising areas and destinations? Distant Shores is a television series about the cruising life with lots of tips for sailors planning to sail away. This is Oswego, New York. We are entering the Erie Canal system 
and this will take us all the way from Lake Ontario to the Hudson River, which gets us to New York City. Plus destination information to help you make your cruising plans. Yeah, I can stand on the bottom. We've been filming distant shores for nearly 15 years and know the fun and challenges of the cruising life. We've made distant shores with you in mind. We include plenty of cruising tips in this travel series, as well as lifestyle segments and hints for sailors heading to exotic destinations. Encouragement for you and your crew to get out cruising. Destinations include the Intracoastal Waterway, the Bahamas, Caribbean, the Mediterranean, Scandinavia, transatlantic passage making, the French canals and more.